Hi, and welcome back to the Business Career College video series. Uh, in this video, we're going to look at the tax consequences of health and dental plans. And we're going to look at both uh, fully insured plans and self-insured plans. Um, I would like to take a minute to thank a couple folks here. Uh, this presentation is derivative of something that Lori Power, uh, anybody who's active in the group benefits world will know Lori. Uh, she has a really excellent book on group benefits called Insights that you can pick up on Amazon. And um, the other person I'll thank here is uh, Helena Foff. And uh, Helena was good enough to uh, email me a question where I thought, I'm gonna take a minute here to uh, put together a video. I think it's a worthwhile question. Uh, I hope that as I present the information, it makes sense to you. I, I do presuppose a little bit of knowledge here about the group benefits business. Uh, that being said, I think even if you're not active in that business, you'll find some utility in this presentation. I should point out as well that I'm recording this all at the end of April of 2019. Uh, the tax rates that are in here are all current probably until tomorrow. Uh, we are sort of in provincial budget season, so we may end up seeing some of the provinces tweak some of the tax rates. Uh, that being said, I've tried to keep it general enough that it doesn't really matter if a tax rate moves by one or two percent, the principles are still valid. There are four concepts that we're going to have a look at here. Uh, we're going to look at benefits plans from a traditional perspective. We're going to look at the uh, medical expense tax credits, which you'll see, you have to understand, but it's not actually as useful as we might like. Uh, we'll look at the health spending account, which is really the self-insured option, or at least probably the easiest way to represent a self-insured version of this. And finally, uh, it's very timely because just last week we had some communication from uh, CRA concerning health spending accounts. Okay, uh, traditional benefits plans. Uh, let's say that we have a, just an off-the-shelf benefits plan, and I don't want to get too fussy on the exact numbers uh, paid in premiums here, but let's say for the sake of argument that I have an employer, and that employer pays, pays $1,500 this year to cover off the health and dental premiums for an employee and their dependents. Now, we shouldn't see $1,500 in claims. Uh, the insurer, of course, has to make some money here. Uh, even at $1,300 in claims, the insurer is probably going to uh, use that as a rationale to increase next year's premium. Uh, that's not really the point here, although you could argue it's the whole reason for this discussion, because often it's that increase in premiums that leads the employer to question whether it's worth it to pay for the benefits plan or not. And, and I'll show you here that it is generally uh, well worthwhile to pay for the benefits plan. So if the employee claims $1,300 of eligible expenses, um, then we're about $200 that's really for the insurer and whatever other costs here. Now the employer gets to deduct the full $1,500. So from the employer's perspective, it's no different than paying salary. But for the employee, uh, this money is tax-free, whereas if they got salary, that would be taxable. So let's look at, and what I've done here is I've just done some rough approximations. So I said, look, just use tax rates every 5%. Instead of trying to use every province or trying to use a representative province, I just sort of averaged out tax rates and I averaged out the levels of income. Yes, you'll find some uh, discrepancies here if you're in Manitoba, for example, or New Brunswick, this is quite a bit different. But if you're in British Columbia or Ontario or Alberta, this is pretty close to what you actually deal with. So if you have a, an earner here around 60 or $70,000, and even at that rate, uh, Manitoba and New Brunswick aren't that different. So I've got an income earner around 60 or $70,000. That person's taxed at about a 30% tax bracket marginal tax rate, that's the top dollar of income, taxed at around 30%. So to put $1,300 into that person's hands, if we were not using it for medical cost, it would take $1,857. But if they're spending that full $1,300 
on medical. Let's assume that we can always guarantee that that person's gonna spend that much on medical. Uh, so they're going to get a $299 medical expense tax credit. And there's actually no province where 299 is exactly the right amount. That is based on a 23%, which is the average of all the tax credits, whatever. There's a bunch of ways I could have done that, but I took the average of all provinces medical expense tax credit. I arrived at uh, $299. And so really this employer in order to put enough money into this person's hands, after taking the medical expense tax credit into account, would have to pay $1,558 of salary. And you can see that as your income gets higher, that gets to be more and more true. That is the benefit of uh, this fully insured plan is greater for a higher income earner. Arguably, I'll take the insurance element out of it, but if you just deal with the tax element, people at the very lowest tax bracket, and this would only be true in provinces that have a 20% tax bracket, that would be Ontario and British Columbia, uh, you might actually be uh, better off without a benefits plan just because uh, the tax credit there uh, outweighs the uh, tax deduction you get for paying premiums. But for most people, you can see this benefit gets larger and larger. Okay, I hope that's reasonably clear. Uh, it might be worth it to take a second to pull out a notepad and calculator and work through some of those numbers. And if you want to check out the tax rates for your province, I often send people to taxtips.ca. Uh, there's lots of very easy to use reference tables at taxtips.ca. You can search uh, tax rate your province at taxtips.ca and you'll find lots of good reference tables there. Okay, I said it was important to understand the medical expense tax credit. The way this works is you get a tax credit at the lowest marginal tax rate and only at the lowest marginal tax rate. Now it's actually not that easy to use. You use the generally lower earner in the household and you have to break 3% of that person's net income. Uh, you can use any rolling 12 month period. So if you have somebody who uh, develops a, a serious illness in October, for example, you might actually save your expenses and roll from October of the current year to October of next year. You might wait a few months to claim that last few months and uh, claim them that way. Uh, nevertheless, you can see down below here where I show what the tax credit is for each province. The provinces all give the medical expense tax credit. Uh, there's one thing that changes a little bit. There's a threshold at which you use the medical expense tax or at which you uh, cap out on your uh, threshold to use the medical expense tax credit. That amount varies by province, but it's really not that significant a difference. Uh, so what I show here is, let's say you had a taxpayer, just for the sake of argument, in Manitoba. Well, my Manitoba taxpayer is at a tax rate of 25.8% for their first dollar of income. That's also the tax rate they're at then for the purpose of medical expense tax credit. And if that person makes $50,000 and has $2,000 of medical expenses, they would then have $129 in actual tax savings. So a relatively small amount of tax savings there. Um, and this is just a function of how this thing works. I do show the full formula down here where you would just take the expenses minus your income times 3%. So that's $2,000 minus in this case, $1,500 times the lowest tax rate. That's how you get to that uh, $129. If we cr keep working our way across the chart, then we'll see for uh, maybe a slightly higher earner who has quite a bit more medical expenses, then your tax savings are better at $750. And you can kind of get a feel for this. Manitoba is one of the um, higher provinces for this. I think it's my top on the right-hand column here. And you can see a range of tax savings here, right around $100 for this lower income earner. and right around $600 to $700 for this higher income earner in this exact scenario. Whatever scenario it is, you can use the formula that I show down here 
uh, income times 3%. Just don't ever use a figure larger than $2,352. There is an upper limit to that. Basically, uh, once you make over about $75,000, we just say, fine, don't worry about the 3% anymore. Just use 2,352. Um, and like I said, that number does vary a little bit from province to province. So if you want to get uh, specific, you could actually do this where you use the provincial threshold for your provincial tax credit and the federal threshold for your federal credit. Again, you can get that information from taxtips.ca if you really want to go to that level of fidelity. Uh, my point here is really just to help you understand roughly what the medical expense tax credit does or doesn't do for you. Okay. And where we often run into this question, if you're not on the group benefit side, but maybe folks on the individual or the sort of small business owner advisory side is with the health spending account. So the employer says, okay, I've got $500 here and I know I wanna pay this to my employees. Should I pay them salary or should I use that to set up a health spending account? And let's assume that this health spending account has a 5% administrative charge, and maybe you run into slightly more expensive or slightly cheaper ones, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you can plug in whatever administrative charge you want there, and it probably comes out better than salary. Because if we're at, if we're taking salary, we're going to end up with somewhere between 250 and $400. And that's approximate, that's very rough. There's a I know a small number of taxpayers who actually pay tax at a rate higher than 50%. Uh, very few taxpayers with a regular income earning type of job where they pay less than 20% tax. So uh, really somewhere around 250 to $400. Whereas the health spending account, of course, leaves you with a full $475. Now, that assumes that people actually use the full amount. But if you do, then you do come out significantly better on health spending account than you would on salary. And the last thing we'll look at is just last week, actually, CRA uh, cranked out a newsletter, a news release that said, hey, we've got uh, a concern here with something that we've seen quite a bit of. And this was interesting because there was always a lot of gray area here. Um, now I'm not suggesting this will completely resolve this gray area, but CRA came out with a position that said, if you're a sole proprietor with no employees, then you cannot use a health spending account. And they actually use some pretty aggressive language in their tax release. They call this a scheme in a, in a pejorative sense. Um, and they also say, if you're incorporated, so now you're incorporated, and you are also the shareholder and you're paying yourself, you can only use a health spending account if there is T4 income. And that's actually a, a sort of specific point here um, because you can be considered an employee, at least under the literal definitions of the Income Tax Act, you can be considered an employee without taking T4 income, but here you have to be taking uh, T4 income at least according to the CRA press release, in order to take advantage of a health spending account. If you have employees, then it's not a problem. If you own an incorporated business and you have three or four employees or even just one other arm's length employee that is somebody other than a family member, then you're okay. All right, I hope that that helps to understand some of the tax implications of insured and fully insured uh, health and dental plans. Uh, I know there's a lot of numbers there, but I did try to give enough background that you can uh, sort of navigate the numbers and get, get a rough idea where the benefits lie. And if you want, you can get a very specific idea where the benefits lie. Thank you very much. If you have questions, please uh, leave them in the uh, comments down below.